Question 47 of the Summa Theologia Prima Pars is one of my favorite questions in the entire Summa. It has in it one of my favorite passages, which I think is absolutely beautiful. So I'm excited to share this one with you. There are only three articles, so it shouldn't take too long to get through this. It also is a treatise on its own. And I, I tend to think that if St. Thomas Aquinas puts one question in its own treatise, He's telling us that this is important, and it is important. These three articles are very important. This is called the Treatise on the Distinction of Things in General. Why are there differences? Why is there inequality? And he's also going to get into the question at the very end, uh, is there only one world? And it's all related to this distinction of things. And so we are going to begin, as you might expect, with Article 1 of this, whether the multitude and distinction of things comes from God, right? The multitude and distinction of things comes from God. He, he quotes, he, he refers to uh, Democritus, who was a pre-Socratic materialist philosopher. And he says, Democritus, for instance, and all the ancient natural philosophers who admitted no cause but matter attributed it to matter alone. And in their opinion, the distinction of things comes from chance according to the movement of matter. All right, just through chance, blind chance, not nothing having to do with God himself. Anaxagoras, another pre-Socratic, however, attributed the distinction and multitude of things to matter and to the agent together. And he said that the intellect distinguishes things by extracting what is mixed up in matter. And as I mentioned yesterday, if you ever get a chance to go back and study these pre-Socratics, they are fascinating philosophers, and they have had a long, I mean, a big influence even on modern philosophers today. But Thomas says this cannot stand for two reasons. First, because as was shown above, even matter itself was created by God. Hence, we must reduce whatever distinction comes from matter to a higher cause. Okay, you can't presume matter because that was created by God. Others have attributed the distinction of things to secondary agents, as did Avicenna, who we referred to a couple of days ago, who said that God, by understanding himself, produced the first intelligence in which, for as much as it was not its own being, there is necessarily composition of potentiality and act. And so the first intelligence, intelligence, inasmuch as it understood the first cause, produced the second intelligence, and insofar as it understood itself as potentiality, it produced the heavenly body, which caused movement, and inasmuch as it understood itself as having actuality, it produced the soul of the heavens. So again, we talked about this a couple of days ago, that God created some things, and then those things created something else, and they created something else, and so... Remember, God said no. I mean, Thomas said no. God is the creator, and and he even denied the instrumentality. Right, all things are, are created by God, and I guess at the at best you could say we we can participate in the creation of God by cooperating with Him, and that, and that's about it. Right. Uh, but this opinion cannot stand for two reasons. First, because it was shown above that to create belongs to God alone. Okay, that's what I just referred to. And hence, what can be caused uh, only by creation is produced by God alone. That is, all those things which are not subject to generation and corruption. Secondly, because according to this opinion, the universality of things would not proceed from the intention of the first agent, but from the concurrence of many active causes. So he's refuting Avicenna. He's refuting what Democritus said. And here's what Thomas says. In this paragraph right here is what I referred to a moment ago. It's absolutely beautiful. And I just love this. He says, hence we must say that the distinction multitude of things comes from the intention of the first agent, who is God. For he brought things into being in order that his goodness might be communicated to creatures and be represented by them. And because his goodness could not be adequately represented by one creature alone, he produced many and diverse creatures. And what was wanting to one in the representation of the divine goodness might be supplied by another. For goodness, which in God is simple and uniform, in creatures is manifold and divided, and hence the whole universe together participates 
the divine goodness more perfectly and represents it better than any single creature whatever. So you imagine a symphony or an orchestra and every single instrument is playing its instrument perfectly and what we hear is the overall sound but all these individual creatures are telling us something about God and what this has done for me is that I mean every time I see a bird every time I see a tree a flower I mean pretty much every time I'm connecting it to God and I'm saying okay God you're communicating yourself somehow remember through trace through image through likeness there's something about every single creature especially the human person that's telling us something about God and then if you take it all together as a symphony as an orchestra and, and all of it working together to re reveal God's goodness and his beauty and his majesty that's what he's getting at here okay everything together is telling us something and what it, one what what is lacking in one is provided by the other okay so this should help you be more attentive to the created world because god is trying to communicate his goodness through it all right the inequality of things is that from god all right i put a picture here of a of a dog and a man nobody would say that the dog is equal to the man the dog is irrational the man is rational and it is a higher creature. I mean, without a doubt, right? So why is that? Why do we have? But then if you had an earthworm or a slug or a cricket in this picture, well, the dog seems to be higher than, than that creature. But why all this inequality? All right. When Origen wished to refute those who said that the distinction of things arose from the contrary principles of good and evil, he said that in the beginning, all things were created equal by God. For he asserted that God first created only the rational creatures and all were equal and that inequality arose in them from free will all right so god created man rational creatures and gave him free will now what listen to what origin says next some being turned toward god more and some less and others turned more and others less away from god and so those rational creatures which were turned to god by free will were promoted to the order of angels according to the diversity of merits. So if you're, according to origin, if you're a good human being, you live a good life, well, then you become an angel, right? And those who were turned away from God were bound down to bodies according to the diversity of their sin. So if you're a bad human being, you become a snake or a cricket or a dog or a, or a grasshopper, right? Um, and he said this was the cause of the creation and diversity of bodies. This is one of the reasons why Origen was never, never canonized, is that he did teach some wacky stuff. But according to this opinion, it would follow that the universality of bodily creatures would not be the effect of the goodness of God as communicated to creatures, but it would be for the sake of punishment of sin, which is contrary to what is said, God saw all things that he had made and they were all good. Right, because then now the creatures are bad. The the, uh, the 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 birds and the snakes and the the bumblebees are creatures that were punished because they were bad human beings, right? And so Augustine says, what can be more foolish than to say that the divine architect provided this one sun for the one world, not to be an ornament for its beauty or for the benefit of corporeal things, but that it happened through the sin of one soul, so that if a hundred souls had sinned, there would be a hundred suns in our world. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay, so Thomas says, uh, he goes on and says that, okay, hence we see in, okay, wait, okay, no, okay, hence in, na here's, here's Thomas's response, in natural things, species seem to be arranged in degrees, as the mixed things are more perfect than the elements, and the plants than the minerals, and the animals than the plants, and men than the other animals. And in each of these, one species is more perfect than others. Okay, that seems to be the case. Therefore, as the divine wisdom is the cause of the distinction of things for the sake of the perfection of the universe, so it is the cause of inequality. For the universe would not be perfect if only one grade of goodness were found in things. He didn't say this directly, but I think what he's getting at here is that there is a there is a hierarchy of being. OK, there's an order from the lowest to the highest. OK, the highest creatures would be the angels. OK, so you go up and you see that there in your mind, there is an order of things and it keeps rising and rising and rising from veget you know, plants and, you know, to 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 dogs and you know, monkeys and whatever and then human beings and angels and it makes you think well there must be something at the very top some being that is 
greater than all these creatures, and that would logically make you think about God, right? Okay, so final article, whether there is only one world. Have you ever thought about that? Is there only one world? Thomas is going to say yes, and this is his reason. The very order of things created by God shows the unity of the world. For this world is called one by the unity of order, whereby some things are ordered to others. But whatever things come from God have relation to order to each other and to God himself. Hence, it must be that all things should belong to one world. Therefore, those only can assert that, okay, therefore, those only can assert that many worlds exist who do not acknowledge any ordaining wisdom, but rather believe in chance, as Democritus, who said that this world, besides an infinite number of other worlds, was made from a casual concourse of atoms. Um, Democritus believed in, in a, he, had, he had actually the first atomic theory. That's why he's so influential to modern science today, is that everything was just random, everything was material, and there was no order, there was no God keep providentially keeping everything in line. And if you remember that one of the proofs for the unity of God is that all things seem to be coming together, all things seem to be under the order of one, kind of like the fifth proof of the existence of God, where, you know, God, through his intelligence, is directing all things back to himself, right? Back to the Father. That brings us to an end of question 47. Also, this treatise on the distinction of things in general, and we will have our next question, 48, tomorrow. And I hope you'll stay with us. Thanks for watching. St. Thomas Aquinas. Pray for us.